Similar to other social media or networking websites emerging in the early 2000s, online dating websites provide an opportunity for identity and expression online, but more importantly highlight how we are seen, approved and liked. With this in mind, this research aims to historicize the ways dating websites reflect dating culture. More particularly, we will zoom in on the gender and relationship norms and expectations that websites project onto their users based on the visual and textual elements of the interface, as users are made to summarize their identity through the reduced cues offered by the platform. An historical perspective on the dating websites OkCupid okay and eHarmony offers not only a reading of how identities are portrayed and the stereotypes attached to it, but also understandings of an evolution of different ways of desiring and relating through the technical affordances of this medium. Eventually figuring out how the age-old process of mate finding is transformed through online strategies and behaviors. We acknowledge the ways in which technologies and social practices are mutually shaped by each other. And so it remains crucial to the investigate the ways that websites both project relationship expectations onto its users and are a reflection of cultural values and norms. In this sense, our research is centered around the question, how do dating websites reflect dating culture through the years? Our objective is to conduct a research on the digital history of particular dating websites to unfold the history of dating as a culture practice expressed online. The analytical framework of the research will be conducted on the dating web sphere. Next, based on a selection of relevant archived versions of the dating websites, we will record the user's interaction with the website's front page using the Wayback Machine tool through the years, conducting an interface analysis. As Richard Rogers states in his 2019 published book, Doing Digital Methods, the interface to the Internet Archive thus creates at once a surface experience from a particular period in web history, while also affording most of historical work. Our findings push two topics forward that are significant. The first one is the shift from prioritizing a partnership to individuality. It was found that over the years, both dating websites shifted away from the ID that people are seeking for a long-lasting relationship and are moving more to the ID that casual dating is a considerable option. eHarmony holds on to the belief that people are looking for love on their website, which is why the shift from relationship-oriented to more casual was over a longer period of time than OkCupid. Their slogan... On the 2003 screen capture, firstly was fall in love for the right reasons, further emphasize, emphasizing the idea of characteristics of a partner are more important than a physical appearance. The front page of both websites was eventually deduced to the, what gender the seeker is and whom they are looking for. This regarding the mention of rela romantic relationships as seen in the screen captures of 2021. The second topic surrounded the website's gender representation and sexual preference. OkCupid okay, has a more progressive approach towards the LGBTQ plus community than eHarmony. eHarmony mainly focused and remained this focus on heterosexual partnerships. On the screen captures of eHarmony from 2000 to 2015, only heterosexual couples are represented on the site, projecting their norms onto its users. From 2000 until 2008, the website afforded its users to only pick between two genders, man and woman, where they can only create a match between the opposite gender. Eventually, the site implemented gay and lesbian dating that can be seen on the screen captures of 2012 and 2021, notably at the bottom of the page. OkCupid's okay, site incorporated a slightly broader choice of sexual preference earlier, seen in the screen captures of 2010 and 2014, where one can choose between straight, gay, and bisexual. Nevertheless, the restrictions in gender remains. Even though both websites introduce sexual orientation options, it still forces its users to adhere to gender roles of men and women by offering only two genders to choose from. This places certain constraints on the ways users can express their identity in the digital space. Reflecting on the research and answering the main question, we came to the conclusion that dating websites are dynamic by adjusting their affordances when it comes to the expectations of their users, playing into societal standards. 
that it represents the transition in how users are approaching dating and how the general public reacts to a broader spectrum of gender and sexual preference. We concluded that the dating websites are still more oriented to a heteronormative society and that these developments do take a while to be implemented, if they do at all. In the end, while these websites are willing to change, it possibly conjointly reflects existing issues in the offline world.